What's up crypto junkies and welcome to our latest video training series. This series is sponsored by Hass Online Software. Hass Online Software creates one of the best auto trading bots. This bot will allow you to trade cryptocurrencies at the speed of professional level without the 20, 30, 40 years experience, my friends. Yes, no, beautiful. All right. All right, you ready to jump in? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, cool. What's up, crypto junkies? It's Jay, and I am joined today with a uh, community member, Justin, who's quickly turning into a friend. And this guy is a, I guess you could say a traditional trader who's now moving over into the crypto space. And we're gonna talk today about some little Jedi indicators that I didn't really know about. Cause again, I'm still learning a lot of this stuff. And these are huge indicators that a lot of traders use. And it is simply the order books. And we're gonna to touch a little bit on volume two, I believe, right, Justin? Yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. Right. What's up, junkies? No. Hey, all right, so he's got his screen open. He's got GDAX open, which is a really easy uh, exchange to use. Very fast loading, not usually a lot of bugs. So I know that's why a lot of people use GDAX over Bit T Rex and Bitfinex. But let's dive right in, man. Take it over. And then at some point, I'm sure we'll kick the screen over to me. And I want to play around with it myself, but I'll let you take lead here. Show us what's up. Okay, guys, uh, what's up? Uh, like Jay said, I'm I'm coming over to the crypto world here from uh, day trading stock markets, mainly penny stocks. And from what I've learned in the, in the penny stock world is there's a lot of different indicators and a lot of different things that you can take into account in order to trade just one strategy. Um, but what, from what I've found, one of the easiest ways to do it is something called order books. And in, in, in the stock world, they call it level two or depth of market. What I mean by that is if you see over here on the left side, you see a bunch of numbers floating around, flying past. I'm sure you guys have all seen that anytime you've been in any, any of the GDAX or any of the exchanges that you trade on. What you see is a bunch of numbers flying around and those are the bid and ask prices. These are the sellers up here in the red. Down here in the green are the are the people that are the buyers. And you're mostly always gonna see the the, the green numbers are gonna be lower than the, the red numbers. It's just, it, it, it flows with the chart. But if you were to you know place in a limit order over here, if you place that actual order, it would pop up somewhere over here in, in it, whether you're selling or buying, it, it would end up popping up over here in the order book. So basically death of market is, is future price, right? It isn't actually happening over here on your candlesticks. It's something that's gonna be happening in the future. It's, it's where the price is actually gonna go. Order books, uh, it's, it's a little different on, the ex on every exchange, as you can see over here in Bittrex. I, I don't like these order books as much because they're too spread out. Can't see all the numbers unless you've got great peripheral vision. You're not gonna be able to see the numbers as easily as you could you know, in GDEX because they're stacked right on top of each other and right here in the middle where it says USD spread, just think of that as where the price right now and the price right now is sitting at 71.49 for, for Bitcoin uh, compared to the US dollar, 71.49.99. So what are we looking for guys? What, what's all this mean? First of all, we're looking for entry and exit points. Okay. Okay. We got here's a perfect example. We got a big seller. What we're looking at market size. Just think of that as number of people buying at this price right here, seventy one fifty five. Look how big that number is. It's huge. That is what we would call a wall. As you can see over here, we've got a little uptrend coming with with the bidders. The the bulls have got the market right now as we speak. But if I was in this market from down here around. 7140 I would start thinking of if I saw this big number pop up right here that a huge number like this 50 and you can see the bars even indicated as well a huge bar popping up at 50.186 at 7155 you can almost bet there's going to be a, a sort of a, a, a price shift or a slowdown at the very least when we get this bar coming up here towards 71.55. And the thing about that is if that number does not get eaten up by the bid, then you're going to see the price start to reverse. Okay? okay. So let me ask this, Justin, let me jump in and ask this question. Are we looking for green uh, buy orders to try and chomp up that 50 sell order? Is that what we're looking for? If, yeah, if, if we're on the buy side, if we're in this right now, 
yes, we want to see that number start to decrease whenever it gets closer down here to the middle where the world, remember, our price is right here where it says, just yep. think of it as your price right here at USD spread. If this big 50 number comes down here to the bottom, you okay. want to see that price get ate up because that would mean you have a chance of continue, a continuation upwards. So if, it does, if our bid down here can't come up and meet that price or overtake it, you're going to see a reverse. And you and you see people right now, they see that number and you can see right here, look, yep. your red number is starting to come out because they see this big number up here and they know there's going to be a wall. So people are starting to get out trying to sell their bid right now and trying to take profit. Hey, that's pretty good. Right, 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 right. Okay. And so just to clarify, the closer that number gets to the bottom, that means we're in it now. And the longer it sits there, the more likely we are to see a, a little correction or a little reversal on our candles. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and you're going to see more and more people get in on that big number too. Now, let me make a little caveat to that. In the, in the, in the, in the regular markets, in the, in the, in the, in the regular market, in the, in the, in the, in the regular market, they've got something that it's actually illegal to do but as we all know in cryptocurrency there's not much regulation in, in, in the regular stock world people will actually manipulate the prices whales will manipulate the price they'll just put a big order out and you'll see it sit there you'll see it sit there for a couple seconds and then it'll just disappear it'll go out of it'll dis disappear out of thin air what that's meant to do is scare new money or new bidders or new traders off so they can manipulate the market. Got it, so um, it's like a fake wall? Right, I'm, I'm not saying that's what this is right now because this number is stuck around here for a while. Uh, yeah, it's, it's hovering. <clears throat> it's hovering, it, it's not going anywhere, and, and you can see we're, we're slowing down that, that little uptrend that we had over here from around, you know, starting out the little kit, the, the wick down here starting at 71.36. It's starting to slow down a little bit. And now we're, you know, we may see it come up here and meet this point, that's what I would like to see, to see to show you guys what happens when this big number gets down here to the bottom. And, and you can see it with smaller numbers too. If you see this 2.4721, it's getting a little bit bigger here. Um, if you would see that number start to decrease, you could make our, we could make our way up there to that bigger wall. It looks like it's kind of coming around there, but. Okay, so 50 represents a bunch of people that want to sell at that price basically. Correct. Okay, what is the number that you start looking for when it comes to a concerning number, like what's your threshold? Is it 20, 25, is 50 it? And that's when you start to pay attention, you're saying. When I see a number, uh, if it reaches over 25, it depends on what, you know, I want to say stock so much, but what cryptocurrency <laughs> you're, you're dealing with. Yeah, because this doesn't apply to altcoins. It's way different with altcoins. We're talking about Bitcoin, which is a completely different beast. Yes, sir. You gotta work hard. So you yes, sir. You gotta be committed. So you yes, sir. It applies, the order book can apply to, to pretty, uh, in my opinion, from what I've seen, uh, it can apply to any any coin, honestly. Uh, all coins, from what I've seen, have traded a little bit more volatility in some cases. If you get some high volume on some lower, lower price uh, coins, you're going to see a lot more volatility than you see sometimes in, in the bigger the bigger coins like Bitcoin and, and ETH and all those other bigger coins. Yeah, However, what, I, what I meant, just to clarify, is not that the order books don't work in altcoins. It's just the, the market size and the numbers that you're looking at are going to be quite different than Bitcoin. Oh, yes, yes, you. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're right. <clears throat> But but basically that that's the gist of it. And you can see it. You 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 can see it if you 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 can see it if you 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 can see it if you if you scroll down. We might be able to see some some bigger. Not really at this moment in time, but okay. You, you can see it. You can see bigger numbers at whole numbers. You, you'll see bigger numbers at whole numbers because they work in, 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 in stocks and in cryptocurrencies. Whole numbers work as great resistance and support lines. Yeah. Um, psychological support lines. Even if you can't find it on a on a bar chart, psychological uh, support and resistance lines mean a lot uh, in, yeah. in the trading. All right, let's let's kind of put this together and add it to everything that we've talked about. I know that you've you've seen the uh, the other trading videos in the series so far, and we've talked about Bollinger Bands and oscillators, which would be your Bollinger Bands, your RSI, your Stash. Um, we talked about MACD, Fib retracements. So, how does this add into the mix? How could somebody really use this? Do they come to the order books first? 
Um, is this what they've done after? Like, at what point would you suggest to use this in the TA process? In the TA process, I would t give it a quick glance at first, yes, but we're really looking at it. You got if you're a buyer or a seller, you want to get good with one strategy. So, whether is you're this good your whole strategy? Like, is this what you predominantly whenever, use? Whenever I am actually in the market, if if I if I'm in the bid, if I've bought in, I don't even look at the candlesticks. I'm looking strictly at the at the order book. I don't even look got at it. the candlesticks or the chart. I'm looking strictly at that because that is the real. And I'm not sure where it is on GDEX. Uh, have you ever heard of time and sales, Jay? That could be a whole nother topic, but it, it's confirmed in what we call the time and sales. That's the actual orders going through in, in a line. So you'll see red and green orders one at a time coming down in a line. I, I'm not sure if they actually have time and sales on GDEX, but- Yeah, I don't know if they have it on GDEX, but under um, Bittrex, it's just the market history. Right, so that that's what we call time and sales, but- Okay. For me, I, I use I do use it for entry and exit exit points. Let's say let's say we did get up to that to that market size, that big number at seventy one fifty five. And I wanted to be a buyer at at, at seventy one fifty five point zero one. I want before I would ever buy in to that that coin, I would wait for that number just before it hit, you know, five or four, two or three or one. That's when I want to hit the actual place order button because I know we're going to have a breakthrough. It's going to break through that wall and, and, and that's what you're looking for in entry and exit points when it comes to the order book. But in terms of what I'm looking at first when I want to enter a market, I, the first thing I want to I want to look for is volume because I, I'm not a big short seller. I, I, I like playing I like playing the up channels. I like playing the bull markets and riding the wave upwards. Yeah. Um, so what I'm looking for first is, is volume because that is the biggest. Oh, here we go. We might yeah, actually. I was just about to say. Here we go. Here we go. So let's see if it. Let's see if we get a turnaround here. You're starting to see it get eight up. Yep. Down Boom. To Thirty-one. We've got the bidders coming up a little bit. Twenty-eight point seven zero eight. Twenty-seven. Bidders coming up a little bit still. If I'm a buyer here at 71.55, I want to see this keep coming down to five before I ever buy in because you don't want to, you don't, like Jay says, you don't want to be late to the party. You don't want to buy in when everybody's selling. So you're you're starting to look to put your buy order in as I've it's got my buy, like five, I've four, got my three. Buy, I, sorry, Jay. I, I've got my buy order already typed in. I've got it all ready to go. And I've got my, I'm, I'm hovering right here on the buy order. I'm waiting for that 20 to come down now though about five or six and right as it's breaking through i'm pushing that buy order i got oh. it i got it yes bitches i got it you got yep. me yep yep I, I i don't mean to like kind of <laughs> you know hover here but i want to see what this does just to it would prove a great point it, it's kind of yep. slow oh here we go it's moving here we go and it broke through see that yep gone now look over here at the candlestick look how high we got there now we're I'm on the one minute time frame here, so you're going to see a lot bigger move. Because the candles are being formed on the one minute chart. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The candles are being formed. This is the lowest level we're, we're playing these roles at. Um, yeah. But closest and, to real time we can get. <laughs> right. And that's why I went here, Jay, because it's it's a, you know, as we all know, BTC is a big number. You're not going to see it as a big a move on a, on a higher yeah. time frame. But I, I'm glad we caught that because now you see, look here, we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to keep going until we find some somebody to step up here on the seller side to make a wall. Look, look at that thing. Yep. Pull back yep. a little bit. So wow. we, had some, we did have somebody step up here at 16, uh, 7181. That's what brought, or excuse me, somebody stepped up at 72, around 7212 up here somewhere. We didn't actually get to see it, but that's yep. what brought the place back down. Yep. Um, and we're seeing some more sellers step up here at 7181. So when it broke through that wall, that's what opened up the, the shadow or the wick to accelerate so high. And then right. something came in with a, another wall a little bit higher up, which is what then stopped it. Right. Correct. Got it. And now we see a red candle. We see a small little reversal. Small little reversal because look, we see we see more more no, a bigger number on the seller side. Now we might see a little a little up. We're gonna see a look maybe a little uptrend because we got some bidders coming in here. See, yep, volume over here of the bidder side. So we might actually see it. So all right, if you were if you were in this right now, what would you be doing? Well, I, first of all, I, I would I, I'm waiting on the pullback uh, because we we never want to buy even if this was a green candle coming up still if we miss this if we miss this buy-in point i'm still waiting on a pullback 
Um, and this is a good pullback here. And I'm definitely buying in now because look, we've got a lot of sell or a lot of bidders coming at 28. This price is going to break through unless somebody steps up. Yep. Yep. We've got another green candle. Yep, so there, what there I'm looking for, uh, and, and when you get into candlestick patterns and bull flags, this could be a perfect bull flag pattern. If, uh, on this little pullback here on this candlestick, yep. I would look to buy at 71 81 70 that's where i'm a buyer because it's breaking the hot the high uh excuse me the high of the last uh red candlestick that's right. always my buy point on a pullback you never want to buy if this green candle is not breaking above this last red candle never because Got that's it. gonna you're gonna be trending back down and you're just you're on the wrong side of things and you can you can make that decision based on what you're seeing in the order books which right. is the and entire look, gist of the process here Yes, and and we've got a big we got a big seller coming in here at seventy one seventy uh seventy one eighty one two, and as you can see, we got a red candle. So that that's the gist of it, guys. It yep. it, it takes a lot of practice and a lot of watching the market and, and to to get these things. But for me personally, whenever I'm actually in in the trade, this is the only thing I'm watching. This is the only thing you need to watch. You don't want to hope and pray and, and, and sit over here and just watch candlesticks. You want to see the actual numbers working for you in yeah. order to, to back your entry and exit points. Because if I'm in this on the bull, I'm still in this. I never, I haven't sold out yet because I'm still in the profit if I bought in way down here. Because remember, we didn't see that big, that big buy or seller step up at that, fit, that big wallet fit with 50 uh, market size. Yep. We didn't see them step up for a while. Once they did step up, I would have my sell order ready to go. But once we saw that start to break through a little bit and it started coming down, I, I'm holding off, I'm holding off, I'm holding off and definitely stayed in once once we got broke through that little resistance point. Now, I, I you know, I'm looking to get out because I've got my profits and, and things are kind of, you know, turning back towards the moving averages here. So it may bounce off the moving average. You've got to use all these different things in unison guys it's it's overwhelming but trust me if you just get in there paper trade is what we call it in, in the stock world fake money it's the best way to do things you can't lose you can only gain knowledge and, and learn from that that's how i did it i was self-taught and then i took a, a small little a class from from a guy that i knew personally and, and he taught me everything i knew about order books and, and just watching these numbers roll by in order to judge your entry and exit points but it, it's all it is is practice and you just you got to want to do it you, you've got to want to yeah. learn for yourself yep and i think you know i don't think people give enough credit to that process like it is not a easy process but it is simple simple yes. and easy aren't the same big difference between right. the two Simple just means it's it's like a low amount of steps. It's like, here's your one, two, three. And it could be as simple as, okay, you know nothing about indicators. Go watch some tuts, watch watch the videos that we've done so far, and then go and just take one, fib retracement, and make your core notes, and just go and test that, and test it, and test it, and test it for a week, uh, every day. All you're doing is just, you're just doing fib retracements on everything, okay? You're gonna learn some things. And then yeah. try and go and make trades based on just that one indicator. Just that one. Do the same with candles. Do the same with order books. Do the same with your oscillators and your overbought, oversold indications. Bollinger bands. And start to see what that gets you. And then what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to create your own process based on what you like. Because the indication game, it's a little masturbatory because there's so many. And you don't need all of them. You need the ones that you like, that you understand, that allow you to come to a conclusion and that's it that's all you need yes sir you're, you're that, then you just apply viciously apply every single day you know just imagine if you were to dedicate an hour a day to this how good you'd be in three weeks four weeks you'd be incredibly good and i know that because i've done the same thing like I applied myself, I hired coaches and mentors, I have people I'm working with now to train and teach me all of these things. And it's like, once I learn, let's say once I get really good at the MACD, then I'm like, okay, what's next? Well, I like fibs, let's learn fibs. Like just go deep on, on everything I can possibly know. I'll get the books, I'll get the, the old Forex training manuals, whatever I can. Okay, now I got that one done, what's next? Candles, I wanna learn candles. All right, let me go balls deep on candles now and just learn everything about those.
And what you eventually come to is a place to where it's like, it's an if then, you know, it's, it's not a generic one size fits all. It's just really figuring out which ones you like and which ones lead you to a buy and sell decision. And yes. you base that off of the accuracy over time. That's it. You're absolutely right. You, you want to master one thing first. That That's how you make money. You're going to make money mastering one thing. And you, you just throw yourself into it, guys. It's, yeah. It's really not hard once you once you put the time and effort in yourself. It is not hard. I know yeah. these are a lot of stuff going at, at once, but once you're only looking for one thing to happen, then you go into the you know once you're in the bid, you go into the next thing. You're looking, you know, I'm in the bid now. I'm looking at my order books, and and that's that's all I do. And I've been very profitable doing that. I haven't even branched out yet, Jay. I mean, I, nice. I this is I just look to buy the bull markets and ride the wave watch these order books and of course yeah i'm looking for certain patterns and stuff candlesticks and stuff like that i like to see price break over moving averages before i buy in usually because you see it a lot of times you'll see candlesticks bounce off these moving averages like down here at 9 20 p.m it'll bounce back down i would rather have bought in up here once the once the price broke this moving average here and just rode that moving average all the way up and we could see this ride up for a while here but like if i'm looking for a buy a buy-in now i'm waiting for a pullback i'm waiting for a red candle to come down here to a moving average or, or come yeah. halfway down this stick before i buy in you always yeah. want to buy in on the opposite side of what the trend is going absolutely absolutely but yeah, yeah, there's a lot more to this stuff and I, I was just trying to, you know, keep it simple and as I could, but it's all about walls with order books, guys. You just want to look at the market size over here, you know, on, on the market size. Price really doesn't matter. It, it does matter to a sense, but you want to see this stuff for entry and exit points and you want to see walls and, and where you're getting out if you're in the bid. Yeah. Hundred percent, hundred percent. All right, guys. So that's it for this uh, this training tutorial. Justin, do you have um, you have Twitter? You have social media. Go ahead and plug yourself for how they can follow along with you. Obviously, they can follow you and, and request uh, your friendship in Discord chat. That's its own app. You can do friend yeah, requests. Guys. The same as Facebook. But what's your social media? Yeah, guys. I, just in Discord, I'm jdizzle 5 just, just hit me up in there. Facebook, my name's Justin, Justin Dane Miller. Just, just message me through there. You can find me on Facebook. I'm not that, I'm a daddy, so I'm not, I'm not that big into social media these days. I don't even have a Twitter, so. Yeah. Um, but just I don't hit me up on Facebook. <laughs> What's that? I don't have Facebook. <laughs> there, well, there you go. Yeah. So. All right, cool. Thanks so much for jumping on with me, guys. And uh, if you haven't already subscribed, you're crazy, but go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future training like this from us and be on the lookout for more of the trading series dropping very, very soon. See ya. All you have to do to get your own copy of the Hass Online Trading Bot is simply click on the link. You'll be dropped off at the homepage. Click on the pricing tab at the top, which will redirect you to the three different license options that they have. They have the beginner license, the simple, and the advanced license. I suggest if you have zero trading experience, you go ahead and start with the beginner. If you have experience with trading, reading charts, and actually executing trades on an open exchange, then opt for the simple or maybe even advanced license. Once you've decided which license you want, click on the green buy now button and it will redirect you to pick out how long or the duration of license you want. You have the choice between a three month, a six month and a 12 month license. Once you've made your decision, go ahead again and click on the green buy now button and you'll once again be redirected to now the cart page. You have to decide how many of the licenses that you want. I'm going to stick with one and click on add to cart. This is where one of the insanely great benefits of being part of the Crypto Junkies community comes into play. They have set up an exclusive discount code for our community, which is we type that in and apply it and it applies almost a 20% discount to our cart and to our total price. You'll see that coupon code applied here. And when we're ready, we just go ahead and click on this purplish proceed to checkout button. Now we're going to go ahead and be redirected to where we have to put in our billing details. So let me just go ahead and do that. We scroll down to the bottom and we have two payment options, a Bitcoin payment, or we can pay with our BitPay account. 
We check the box that says I've read and accept the terms and conditions and finally place the order. If you've selected the Bitcoin payment option, you'll be able to go ahead and send the money to that address. And if you've selected BitPay, you'll be able to go ahead and process through using your credit card. Congratulations, you've gone ahead and gotten yourself all set up with the Hass Online Trading Bot and you're ready to go. Now all you have to do is log into your account and you'll see under the Downloads tab all of your downloads, your license key, and all the information that you need to go ahead and take the next step and start using your brand new trading bot.